So you wanted to find out how to get started and to the step-by-step -step tutorial how to handle refunds and returns of the Shopify store in 2024. So it's actually relatively simple. First of all, what you wanted to do is to understand the refund and the return policy. So first and foremost, it's important to have a clear refund and return policy in place. So make sure your customers know what to expect when it comes to returning or refunding the purchase. To add those directly into your store in a very easy way, just focus into the lab hub that sets the settings. Here, I'm gonna scroll all the way down and focus into the policies. Into policies, what you can do is to customize the return policies and enable the written return and refund policies. If you don't know how to get started, focus into create from a template. And automatic is going to be generating an actual template of the refund. For example, the damaged and the issues, exceptions to not returnable items, exchanges, European Union 14 cooling off route, and so much more refunds. So make sure that you have just um, updated all the actual information about your store. And if you're okay with that, just I'll leave it as it is. I can do exactly the same thing with the privacy policy, do exactly the same thing with the terms of the service and the contact information. So now that I have just having all of these elements already been added, now let's navigate directly into our orders. In the Shopify administrator dashboard, what you wanted to do is to navigate here into the low pod that says orders. Now here you can find the order requiring and to the front on the return. Locate the order that requires the refund and the return. For example, this item has now been added as paid and fulfilled. So someone wants to make the return of this product. If I choose a return, in this case, I choose the selected returned items. So in this case, what I'm going to do here is to choose what is the element that I wanted to return. In this case, this one. Select the reason. In this case, let's say, for example, that the was the size was too small. And the exchanged items, if I wanted to send another product instead of this product or just to make the return of this product. Now, if you have the return shipping options, you can upload your return label. This is depending if you have an actual URL, a new tracking number, shipping career with APC, with UPS, with uh, China, the DHL or whatever. In this case, no shipping is required. So lastly, go to here to create a return. And as you can see here, it's gonna be created the return into progress. So that means that what I need to do is to make sure that the original order has now been added here. The subtotal appears here, the shipping, the total, and the paid. And here into the timeline, you might be seeing that we have the confirmation order, the fulfilled item, the order now that's been achieved, and now the unachieved order created an actual return. This is how you can initiate or refer the return. So choose a refer method. So select whether you want to ease your refund back to the customer original payment method or to offer restore credit. For return specific whether the item will be changed or refunded, usually it's much more faster to offer them an actual credit for our store. So after configuring the details, process the refund of return, so Shopify will handle the transaction and update the order status accordingly. So this is the part which you wanted to communicate with the customer. Keep the customer informed throughout the refund or the return process. Send them a confirmation email with details of the refund or the return in any next step. So the conversion summary appears here and you can view the conversion details down there. Lastly, what you do have available here is the actual restocked element. If you wanted to just focus into restocking this after you make the actual return of one product. If I fulfill the order once again, there's gonna be an actual notification that the return has now been processed. In this case, now I wanted to close my return because it's now been returned. Once I have just, of course, received the payment or making the actual devolution uh, of this, uh, in this, in this case, this order. And as you can see, it is now returned. So keep the customer informed throughout the refund of the return process. So send them a confirmation email with all the details of the refund once again in any next step. And there you have it, guys. You have successfully learned how to handle the successes refunds and return to the Shopify store. So there's no need to be worried about. It's actually really, really simple. Sometimes this happens to everybody. So don't be afraid to tell them what was the main issue. And there's always a first time for everybody, guys. So thanks for watching. If you find this tutorial helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with others. So stay tuned for more valuable tutorials from online media. Until next time.